Howdy folks, welcome to the 3D Sapiens Roadshow. Your host Dan Davis here, back at the campsite. Um, since I haven't mentioned this in a while, for those of you who have just recently tuned into this whole show, this campsite that I've set up is about a couple hundred yards south of Yosemite National Park. Go away, mosquito. Um, which is to the north of me, that way, a couple hundred yards. So this is Sierra National Forest land. It is Wednesday. My hat is a mess. Look at that. This is my old hat. I'll explain my clothes in a minute. <laughs> um, so uh, it is Wednesday, July 18th. It's about 7.15 p.m. The light is the main reason I wanted to um, show this today, do this little episode. If you look behind me, the sun is setting. I'm going to have to... Um, look through the camera here. Let me do this. Thing. Okay, here we go. Alright, so that direction is west. Let's see if we can even see the sun. The Ferguson fire is going on right now. It's an area kind of south. Oh, there it is. There's the sun. Um, south of Yosemite, south and west somewhat. Uh, there's this area of wilderness between highways 49, 140, 49, uh, there's kind of this bowl of wilderness surrounded by settlements, and um, the fire is down in there. It's a really inaccessible place, really wild. Um, so it's a big one, and it's taken them a while to get it under control. But this light that you see right now, this is from the smoke from that fire. I can't even see the sun. Where did it go? I saw it a minute ago. Let's find it here. Um, it's just this ball of red, neon-looking light. Anyway, um, slight variation in the setup. I'll talk about that in a minute. So I got up here this afternoon, and if you haven't seen yet, there's a little episode. The last one was with Paul McCrary, I believe his name was. Uh, a baseliner, also known as a slack line, I believe. Uh, basically, it's, it's uh, balancing. And so I shot some video with him. Okay, let me walk back up to the campsite and find this stupid sun. It's hard to even find it. There's so much smoke. Okay, so I had to walk all over the campsite to find a hole where I could see the sun. And there it is. Let me zoom in here. Come on. Yesterday when I was driving from uh, Oakhurst to Mariposa, you could see the smoke really, really well. It looked like a volcano. It was poke po apocalyptic almost, post-Armageddon kind of thing. The smoke just kind of came out like reminded me of a, of a volcanic explosion, volcanic eruption, with the smoke just coming out in like ridges that went in all different directions, you know, like tendrils of an octopus, but kind of creamy chocolatey color that looks scalloped, almost like pastry or something in the sky, but the sky was totally orange, the sun was like that, kind of neon color. Anyway, um, it is a heck of a fire, so the light, if you look around, it looks very orangish. It also kind of, was, yesterday I was kind of having flashbacks to uh, Congo, because it reminded me of Congo in the dry, dry season, where you could kind of smell the smoke in the air, and it was kind of humid, but dry and smoky all at the same time. Anyway, um, so summertime things like ice chests being covered up more with clothes that's not that are not being used. Um, keeping things out of the sun with towels. I have gone back to using a big, actually two big boxes. One has the toys, one has the tools because um, we're going back and forth with uh, Fax's car sometimes. We're in, sometimes I'm in my car by myself, sometimes with her in her car. So there's equipment up that's got to go. The big boxes are like normal, um, so that stuff is just goes in the other car. But there was a bunch of little stuff that uh, I also needed, so I I got these two big long plastic boxes out. So 
I don't have to use the table top thing anymore, so that one board I got rid of. But I keep the small board just to kind of have another place to set stuff. Anyway, so that's kind of the summer thing. Um, and with the clothes, okay, bad color of shoes, but still my shoes are falling apart. But generally you want light colored clothing because mosquitoes are attracted to dark colors like blue and black, especially black, although some people say blue. But anyway, um, so those colors attract very well. So I tend to wear light clothes like this stands out and that's also why I have the um, lightish colored hat because I have darker colored hats that are in better condition but um, mosquitoes like those so next thing you know I've got this little halo of mosquitoes anyway so that's kind of the summer operation and again expanding into two vehicles putting stuff in um, boxes that can get transferred between vehicles. One last thing, this mosquito netting. Um, Fax had bought this a while ago and just had it and uh, we had been using it, I've used it a couple different ways now, hanging it from the tree right there. Um, I've also got some mosquito netting that I hacked out of tents that were falling apart. So the one little place that this didn't cover, um, I've got some extra right there for that. So the car can be open, cooling off, without having to worry about a cloud of mosquitoes in it when I go to bed. But um, this thing also fits over her Ford Explorer uh, without the back open. So we can at least open all four windows and kick back when the mosquitoes are bad. But um, today they haven't been bad. So I'm still outside, haven't gotten in the car yet at all. Uh, the tent here got moved slightly by Paul so that he could do his slack line thing between these two trees. Again, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's pretty cool. I will be getting a setup because it sounds like awesome exercise. It's perfect for camping. All you gotta do is strap it in between a couple of trees and then it's like tightrope walking. So, anyway. So, um, once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time on the 3D Sapiens Roadshow.